What's up everyone, Chris here from anabolicmen.com where we bring you 100% research-backed men's health information. So today we're going to be talking about uh, tribulus. Now, to just I'll cut straight to the chase. We here at Anabolic Men think that tribulus is uh, one of the worst test booster supplements or ingredients that you can find out in the market right now and we will explain why. However, uh, there is a, a full breadth of research showing you know, this thing and that thing and uh, some of it is positive, some of it's negative and this is where this tribulus is a good example of taking a contextual view at the research because there's a, a, a marked difference between animal and human research. So let's get into this right now. I'll show you guys some studies. So tribulus is, is really popular in, especially in the bodybuilding community. And you see it as one of the, the common threads of ingredients around if you search for you know, any kind of test booster supplement on the market, uh, you'll see it anywhere. So you go type, type in testosterone booster into Amazon. I guarantee you almost every single uh, test booster on the front page, almost every single supplement on the front page of Amazon for the search results there is going to have it in there. And that's really because the people that make a lot of these test boosters really know nothing about natural testosterone enhancement or they don't know anything about how to read studies. So uh, it's, it's become very common in the bodybuilding community because of the theory that it will help increase H or LH production, which is luteinizing hormone. That makes sense because here's a study right here I'll put up on the screen. It contains uh, what are known as steroidal saponins and steroidal glycosides, which might have a slightly androgenic effect in the body. However, the research itself is kind of a mess, and we'll look at what we see here. So this study right here, for example, this is basically the, the poster boy of, of uh, scientific proof for you know, the, the tribulus and test boosting effects of tribulus. However, it's done in monkeys and baboons, and they are given tribulus injections. So uh, an injection is definitely something a bit different than anything you would take uh, that you'd find in a, in a capsule out on the market. Also, what they found in this study that was that the tribulus injections did uh, double the testosterone levels in these monkeys. However, it was short-lived and the, their T levels fell back down. So that, it really doesn't prove anything. It shows that when you inject tribulus extract into a monkey, their testosterone will go up and then drop back down. That's all it really shows. There's no real human application that we can pull from that because it's not realistic in, in, our, in our own sense, you know. So uh, here are a few studies we'll put up on the screen done in uh, rabbits and rats. So those also showed some slight increase in testosterone levels. However, rabbits and rats are not humans. So we always like to look for human studies. Animal studies can inform decisions uh, and sometimes you see with animal studies that you see uh, similar results as in human studies however the case this is not the case with tribulus so people always point to the the animal studies with tribulus however they never point to the human studies which actually don't show anything good for you know specifically for testosterone so there's here's a here's a human study right here uh, it didn't talk about testosterone at all but it did they did talk about an increase in strength endurance and body composition in the, in the resistance trained men compared to placebo in this study. However, that really has nothing to do with testosterone, which is what we're looking for. And part of that can come with the fact that a lot of herbs are actually, you know, good ingredients in and of themselves for, for fighting stress in your body, which, which is totally fine. Like if you're taking tribulus to, for that reason, then that might be good. But I just kind of want to point out, you know, since tribulus is so heavily marketed as a test booster, just point out the fact that there's not really much research on it in humans. So here's a human study right here that finally came around, and it showed an uh, uh, increase in testosterone and LH levels of men and women who take the standardized tribulus extract containing, they had to have at least 10% of uh, the active ingredient protodiocin, which is one of the steroidal glycosides that is in uh, tribulus. However, the, the, that study was then followed up uh, with a couple other human studies after that that showed, we'll put, there's three of them, we'll put them up on the screen right now. They showed no increase in testosterone or LH uh, in young men, which is, which is you know, generally who's going to be you know, watching this video right now. So 
young men or older guys. So there was no, there was no increase uh, according to these three studies. Now, what can we learn from that, from that whole body of research? The first thing that we can learn is that, that the herb alone in animals as an injection does appear to increase testosterone levels. Well, also with the protodiacin, which I just me mentioned, when it's at the right level, when it's over the 10%, it would appear that it may help humans. However, the protodiacin level in any kind of, of, uh, of tribulus that you would find on the market is next to nothing. So the ones that are, uh, and that's, that's an important lesson to learn really, when looking at supplements, there are, there are certain things as you know, the yield is one. So someone might say there's 100 milligrams of XYZ in this supplement. Uh, but for a lot of these things, uh, the yields are like 10% or less. So you might have 100 milligrams of something, but if it only yields 10%, you're really only getting 10 milligrams of that. The other thing to look out for is, in the, and you see this in ashwagandha too, is there are active ingredients in herbs and then the rest of the herb, the active ingredient is really what, what is, you're looking for and the percentage of active ingredients. So for example, in ashwagandha, with analides are what you want to have. You want to consume ashwagandha that has higher with analide content. So uh, for example, KSM 66 ashwagandha has uh, double the with analide content from just regular off the shelf ashwagandha that you'd find. The same is true with tribulus. All of the tribulus that you find on the market that are in these, these test booster products uh, actually contains little to no protodiacin, which is the um, active you know, steroidal glycoside in it that, that you should be, that, that one study showed that it, it helped, but the other three studies didn't show anything. But the fact is that that one study had it at 10%, and then um, most tribulus you find on the market will have it around you know, next to nothing. In that, so it has no active ingredient in this commercial tribulus. So really, what we find is that it, it it has shown some promise in animals, especially when when given injections. Uh, but that that animal research didn't translate to humans properly. So there's really no reason to take tribulus. It might help with your libido a little bit, but there are other great ways to increase your libido, like stacking uh, vitamin C and garlic together. Uh, just some simple stuff like that. You don't need to fall for the tribulus tricks of the market. And, and there's one good way to tell if a company knows what they're talking about when you're looking for a, a, like a test booster supplement is to look and see if it has tribulus in it because if it does, then that company has no idea uh, anything about, like any useful knowledge about testosterone boosting in general. So uh, that's just a good warning sign to look for. So what do we recommend? That you take instead. So there, there are a couple things you could take: royal jelly, uh, mucuna, um, creatine has a lot of uh, androgenic boosting properties. Ashwagandha, like I said, has a massive amount of research. Phosphatidylserine has a lot of research in it behind it. You can go over on the anabolic marketplace. We have a ton of different things in there that have uh, nothing gets into the anabolic marketplace without it having proven human results on, on uh, men's health. So. Anything over there, uh, and then we also, there's, she came out with Testro X, which is basically the best formula ever made for, um, as a test booster, because we realized that it was such a crappy marketplace and there's all this garbage in this marketplace that Ali and I sat down and said, let's just make one that actually works, that actually has human studies behind it. And so uh, Testro X contains magnesium, zinc in, in their highest bioavailable forms. Uh, KSM 66 organic ashwagandha, like I said, has the double the withanolide content as regular ashwagandha. Forskolin, inositol, glycine, and L-theodine, which those three increase uh, GABA levels and GnRH production, which is the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which triggers downstream to produce testosterone naturally, and uh, boron. So this is good stuff too. That's a good option. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you like the channel, Go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.